Python. Hello and welcome to this video about this Dell motherboard yet again. We're back to it. Yes, we're back to the Dell motherboard. I'm going to go through the details on the motherboard uh, as much as I can. I've had a few questions about the board and I actually was talking to somebody today about Dell computers in general and they suggested that may, they may just be able to uh, help me out via somebody that they know. So a friend of a friend who knows somebody's friend whose cousin's brother's uncle it is um, we're going to talk to a nephew's niece's auntie and they may know uh, that their grandfather's son that used to work in Dell down in Limerick um, has an idea of what this motherboard actually is. This motherboard actually existed on the Dell website um, with a full schematic like a, basically a, a, wasn't a photograph it was a drawing of the board and I pointed out what everything was on the board and I went to actually get it back a few years ago actually you know let's say four or five years ago the most probably four years ago and Dell had removed this board off the website obviously enough it's an old board but they had it up until only a few, few years ago on the website still in full glory explaining what this board was what all the chips were and so on and so forth I'm going to recall what I remember from the board and hopefully it'll help you out uh, when you want to reconfigure one of these boards. First of all it's out of a Dell Dimension uh, 466V that's what it says on the front. Uh, I'll bring that machine over in a, in, in a bit at the end of the film and I'll show you what that machine looks like. When I look it up specifically uh, I can tell you that it's a Dell Dimension XPS 66 MDT. And this one is with a revision to BIOS. I'm nearly positive there was a new BIOS that came out after that but again I can't find that order to update it. This BIOS is fine. The only downside of this board is it takes a hell of a long time to boot past the first screen. If you've got 4 megs of RAM which is what's in this at the moment it's fairly quick it'll detect the memory it'll do a quick run through it, it'll read the blah blah blah, test it, all the usual stuff and it'll boot the windows. But if you have more than 4, four megs, let's say 16 or 32 or 64 which is up all the put into these machines, 64 is lovely on these machines um, it tends to take an age. Now as I said before about these boards from Dell, they are a beautiful board, they are a very well put together board and very well configured and very well laid out. Um, so I'm going to go through what's what. First thing we have on this board, uh, we're going to you know, slowly pan in there, is the cache controller, controller chip. Now the cache controller chip is a very important component that you're going to need um, to actually install cache on this particular motherboard. Without this controller chip, basically you can forget about it. You're not going to be able to install. Um, let's bring that out a bit. Let's go back and focus. Um, you're not going to be able to install cache on this board whatsoever. And this is the chip in question. Okay. Now this chip, and I'll put it into the machine so it's easier for me to read. It is an MT five C for cat two five six eight. Now you're going to need this chip. Without this chip, you've no cache control. Okay. You need that chip. Vital, very important. While we're in the area, let's have a look at what else is in here. 512K of video memory with an additional uh, 512K of video memory. Uh, with both of these together, you have a total of one megabyte of video memory on this particular board. Now that little jumper you see there between the two pieces of memory, it's that jumper I think, or the one above it, this one here, which tells the computer that it has one megabyte of RAM or no, no, uh, one megabyte of RAM. See this one at the top? Let's lift that back up again. This one here I think is the, is the jump you need to install um, to let it know that this particular memory here exists which then gives you the full suite of me memory. This particular jumper here I think you can figure it out yourself, just plug one in, plug one out, it'll tell you quick enough, believe me. Um, this other jumper here is designed so that you can Tell the computer to use the integrated memory or to use your off-board memory, which would be, let's say, either ISA or VLB. So, you know, it, it is a very good board in that score. And, uh, you know, you have the choice. So if you're plugging in a VLB video card that uses this slot and the ISA slot, you disable that jumper and it'll boot. If you happen to disable that jumper instead of that jumper and it doesn't boot, you get in the black screen, just do the other one. Just swap them around. It's one of the two. I can't remember offhand. I'd have to basically go into it and mess about it. But don't worry. You won't kill your board or kill yourself. Um, it's a very safe thing to move. Um, the other uh, jumper here on the board uh, is the ones for the cache itself. This is the cache here. Or cache as I always call it. But 
apparently it's cash, uh, as in money in your pocket. So the cash that's up here, um, I'm gonna zoom with that nice and fast. So we can get around there. Oh yeah, that's good. Some good panning going on there. We'll make it a loose little bit. Okay, this particular memory that you see here is IDT. Um, and the IDT RAM. IDT RAM. We'll read it up there, so look. Now the IDT RAM, let's have a look. This particular IDT RAM is model number 71256. The next line is S20TP. And the following line is 9324P for Peter. Okay, and you also need this chip down here from Texas Instruments which is a CY7C167A dash, uh, or sorry, minus 15PC, that's the speed rating by the way, 9346 space 112410. Now you need that chip there, and you need this chip here. Uh, interesting. That's the Texas Instruments chip there. Sorry, I have it so zoomed in, I'm trying to read it off here. That's the one I just read out to you there, so hopefully you can see that. Okay. See why one, okay. All right, and there's the memory chips you're gonna need, the cache chips. So they're IDT chips. Okay. Now the next bit of important information on this are these particular jumpers. That's your speed jumpers uh, for dictating the speed of the CPU, and these jumpers here are for dictating the size of the cache. Again, there was a configuration of how to do that. I don't know where it is. I don't. I don't have it, but up the PC, you'll see on it that it'll list the amount of cache built in. At the moment it's set to 128, so that particular setting there at the moment is correct for 128. You will change that for 256, and um, you do move the jumpers around if you're putting 256 into it. But I think it's like put them on the outside, put them on the outside, and you get 256. But again, easy enough to mess about with, it's not very complicated. Um, but there, you will need to change them to get the uh, cache upgrade. That's the ones there you want to mess with. Okay, so let's bring that back out again. So, as I've, I've talked about this board before at length, but in case you haven't seen the other video or you don't want to have a look at the other video, that's the system BIOS uh, on this machine. It's a flash BIOS. You can update the BIOS with a simple floppy disk. If there isn't a BIOS available for it, you can update it very, very simply. Um, and let me just see the front there. You've got all your connections here in the front. You've got your hard drive LED. You've got your speaker connector, you've got your uh, hard drive connector, and your power LED connector. Um, so that's power LED, and this is your reset here. So reset, your power LED, your speaker connector, and your hard drive connector. Okay, so they're all fairly, you know, fairly self-explanatory. Nothing, nothing too major in there. Um, are we still zoomed out far enough? Yes, we are. I'm just very aware of that because, obviously, uh, I'm chatting away, but you can't see half the stuff. Um, what else is here you need to put in here? Um, I think that's fairly alright. The only other quirk about this is the memory itself. I found some memory doesn't work on this board, some memory does work. Um, one of the tricks I found around it was to leave the 4 meg that came with it plugged in and go that way. Um, but um, yeah, I have had some weird quirks. This particular motherboard at the moment, as of the 21st of March 2016, is for sale on eBay by an American. And I have a funny feeling it's the very motherboard I sold to America uh, via eBay. Um, and the reason why I say that is I had this, this chip here was missing, which I remember on the board being missing, and none of these chips were in it either. And funny enough, his board on there has missing this chip and missing all them, which I will thought was very unusual because all the boards that I have have this chip included, uh, and all these obviously here included. Um, they haven't got 256K on them, they've only got the uh, standard 128, but this chip here I wouldn't have thought would have been removed by Dell, I would have thought that would have been installed in the factory along with this simple cache, um, so very unusual that it was uninstalled or not there, um, so it could be my board, you never know. Um, the other aspect of it is this particular machine here was assembled in Ireland, it actually says in the bottom of the case that it was made in Ireland, that's not really true because we didn't make boards of this in Ireland, um, I'm just at the machine here at the minute, that has this particular board installed in it, so I'm going to show that to you now. Just want to make sure. What I'm dropping there is the shield for the keyboard, and um, this is the shield that goes on the back over here on the keyboard. So 
you know, I'll show you. That's not free advertising for a Zeus, by the way. It just happens to be the map I have. That's of course the Zeus for the sponsor me, and I'm only too happy to advertise their motherboards. Now, next thing we got is this fucking heavy box. Look, there's one little leg sticking out, and a speaker cable. So this is the bottom of the case. Ooh, hope you're all excited now. I am. This is the bottom of the case, and right here. It says made in Ireland. Oh, we gotta know. So, it says made in Ireland. Yeah, more like assembled in Ireland. And the manufacturing date is written here. It has the 12th. No, the 20th of the 12th because it's American. It's backwards. So, you know it wasn't ours, wouldn't you? The way we do things in Ireland is we have the, the, uh, the date first, then the month. So, it's the 16th of March 2016 rather than March the 16th, 2016, if you know what I mean. Um, although it's March 21st at the minute, but you know what I mean. So the case of here, this was made um, on the 20th of December, 1993. And yes, it still runs. And that is one solid case, that's for sure. Very, very thick steel on that. You wouldn't get a, a case with that thickness of steel on now. That gauge of steel. So as we have inside this one, we have yet another 486 motherboard. Woohoo! I told you, I've got a few of them. Um, just to get back to selling them for a second. Um, when I was trying to sell this particular motherboard, uh, nobody wanted it. Uh, a few people wanted it for half nothing. Uh, I had them selling for 80 quid or thereabouts. Nobody was buying them. Eventually eBay said to me, why don't you stick it in an auction? People are always buy an auction and the price goes up. So I says, Brian, so I did that. Sold for 15 quid. Hmm, yeah. Won't be selling any more of them, that's for sure. Not a 15 euro, anyway. It certainly isn't worth it. By the time you have uh, fees and the like, yeah, it really is not worth it. Um, okay, so anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, so the motherboard itself, again, it's the same one, same idea. So we got the RAM in there, we got the jumper. See the jumpers off on that one there, it's stuck on there inside. Actually, it's also a slightly different colour. See that? See the colour of this one? See the colour of this one? The other thing actually you'll notice on this one, which is interesting too, is the chipset. I'm going to actually show you that. I shouldn't have held that light by the top because it's blooming hot. The chipset in this one is an Opti Premium chipset. So I'm going to go into that now and show you. So it's an Opti Premium chipset, and it's the 82C801 Vision Air, I presume. Uh, and then we have the Opti chipset on this baby. Which is an Opti 82C801, and most likely Revision B. Isn't that pretty cool? And it's a different colour as well, you might notice. The BIOS though seems to be the same on both of them. Uh, A02, yeah, revision A02. Four, four, what the heck? 48033, there you are. And that one is the same. 48033, revision A02. Identical. Um, it's a bit dusty in there, alright, but yeah, it's a different colour. See that? This board is a slightly different colour than the other one. But yeah, it's the same chipset. Just revision A and revision B. Um, I can't say I've noticed any speed differences between the two chipsets. Um, the Cirrus Logic video card in them is a CLGD5428. Yeah, same video card. Still the, I'll show you that now, that video card chip. Um, this might not be able to, no, I can't see it with the... We'll come back here a bit and all that. There's the video card chip. I'm just going to zoom into that, and I'll just tell you something. If you do buy one of these motherboards, and the guy who was asking about the chipset, he obviously has one of these motherboards. Um, if you do have one of these boards, they are actually a very, very good board, um, insofar as the integrated chipset is concerned. This particular Cirrus Logic video card is the... Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> is the... Uh, <coughs> anyway, it's a cl dash. GD5428. Okay, now that particular video card by Search Logic 
and with support of the one megabyte of RAM on the motherboard. Um, now you can get ones that have two megabytes on them, but not in this particular board. Let me just uh, want to check my reference here again. Hold on a sec. So this will C or yes, L G S C. Serious logic. I have a reference book here that gives a lot of this information. You see, what is it again? G D five four two eight. I think it's only one step down from the top one, which is the two nine. G D five four two eight. I think I also go through this video card with my um, Riven documentary. Yeah, it was available as a standalone video card, all right. Um, it's mentioned in the book, though. Right? Let me okay. W W D Western Digital. Uh, yeah, I think it will take. Uh, I think this will take. Full. Hold on a second. Give me one second. Bear with me. Bear with me. I just want to see now if I can get this up. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Cirrus Logic five four two A. Yeah. Now the GL the CLGD five four two eight is uh, basically what what they did was they upgraded their five four two six chip. Uh, and they just basically gave a little bit of, of a faster a bit BLT engine. Um, the 5429, um, the other one that I have, I actually have the 5429 in a VLB version as far as I remember. And the only difference between that one and this one is the memory is a slightly faster speed. Um, the only difference, I have never really noticed any difference, but I reckon with the way the RAM is on the motherboard, the RAM on this, as, you, as I've shown you already, um, the RAM on this is, uh, use that same piece there, let the RAM there not to come into the focus. Um, the RAM on this particular uh, video card is with these, you know, five chips that you see in front of you. This is the built-in chip with basically uh, 512 built into it, and these are your add-on chips. This chip here is a, is a superior chip as far as it's integrating more memory onto the one, so it's a little bit faster to access. It doesn't really matter in these old machines, it's not really that critical. Because overall the system performance is a bit hampered anyway by you know things like the by like the CPU and so on. But you know these particular chips here, you know, running together gives you one megabyte of onboard RAM, which is which is pretty good. Uh, it is one megabyte of onboard RAM, isn't it? Yeah, five twelve and yeah, it is. Yeah, sure. Anyway, one megabyte is actually quite a lot for the four eight six, uh, and of this particular caliber, it's pretty good. Um, there is a five four three zero available apparently. Uh, and that is quite close to the 5429 uh, but obviously it has the 5430 core and has a 32-bit host interface and um, the last one that was available in VLB as far as I remember will be the 5434 which I have as an orchard, righteous orchard somewhere um, and it has a 64-bit internal memory interface uh, but it only supports that particular amount of RAM if, sorry, it only support that particular interface if you have 64 megs of RAM. Now, I do have an Orchard video card um, of that um, of that particular time. And the reason being it won't support it is because of the way memory is mapped. Uh, with 1 meg of RAM, it can't map 64. It needs, needs basically uh, 248. Ooh, I'm remembering some of the numbers, I'm very impressed. Um, it needs that to actually map the 64 bits. Um, a bit like when you have Windows XP that's 32 bit, you put 4 gigs of RAM in and you only come out with about 3. Um, it uses the other gigabyte for system. But it's also a restriction, a limitation within the 32 bit operating system. Um, so that's 34 to 64 bits. It's the same idea with the with the video card. Um, so it'll need 2 megabytes to actually get there. This is a more basic model, but for an integrated video card it's pretty good. And the great thing about it is the VLB at least is built in and leaves you with two free VLB slots. Now for most people, one megabyte of RAM, uh, video RAM on a machine of this caliber is going to be more than enough anyway. Um, so let's just uh, come back out there again. We have 19 minutes now at this stage, which is pretty good. I'm just concerned about this particular video camera cutting me off because it'll cut me off and make two files, which are fine, that's okay when I'm going to edit them together. But when they end up in two separate files, um, it can be quite frustrating um, when I'm not doing, like I'm basically doing a, a live uh, feed rather than a on-the-fly job. So uh, 
that's the front of the machine there. I shall bring it over here. That's a little view of the shredder you're getting there. Let's see if we can get it around there for you. So there you go. Ooh, that's hot. That is darn hot. Let's bring that over there. There you go. And as you can see, the B floppy drive has uh, faded lovely, you know. And again, another sticker here. We'll zoom into that when we finish of that. Um, you see now, we finished there of that. And I'd just like to say to everybody there, thanks very much for watching this video. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, I'll hear some news about this particular Dell. And uh, I'll be able to get back to you with some more information in relation to the motherboard and uh, some other technical specs that may be available for this particular machine but uh, until then this is uh, Christian signing off with his Dell made in Europe and uh, I'll see you again later bye bye